All right, hello and welcome to SketchUp Talk, the podcast with the most references to the word SketchUp per minute of any podcast out there. I'm your host, Aaron, and with me today is Tyson Karchner. Tyson works here at SketchUp. He is our SketchUp training manager. Welcome, Tyson. Thank you, Aaron. Did you like that intro? That yeah, oh, yeah, that was, that was great. You're I was really on the good fly. This. Yeah. Um, all right, so you are the sketchup training manager what exactly does that consist because i know i mean people who don't know who aren't here in sketchup we use the term training for a lot of of different pieces so you have a specific piece that as the training manager you're responsible for we do and and you're right because the t it's it's a potentially vague potentially broad <laughs> title and in fairness because training in sketchup sometimes we've done it in person sometimes we have online resources that's true and I have done it all, so I mm -hmm. guess it's not terribly <laughs> That's why you're the manager. presumptuous <laughs> to say that. Um, but as much as uh, sometimes we, we do um, in-person training, which is really effective and really great, the, obviously the, there's limitations on how much of you could, you can do that. So my focus is on online training and where you. Uh, manage a lot of the, the YouTube and let's say more of the casual informal. Mm -hmm. I have focused on, let's call it the really directive formal online training. So right now we have a platform that we call campus. It's learn.sketchup.com. And that's where I spend most of my time is trying to build that platform and build in new uh, learning resources for all kinds of industries for beginners and for professionals. It's the whole spectrum we're trying to cover, you know, which is easy. Yeah. <laughs> Just any learning so style easy. for anybody out there. So, so this, I mean, th this merits just, just, going around this for a second because like like you just you touched on a bunch of them because we do have people who go out and do direct training from SketchUp uh Josh who we've done people who have seen our live stuff have have, have seen before Josh focuses primarily on our enterprise customers and doing direct training going on site that sort of thing um that's one way to learn uh that's not something everybody can do though. Not everybody can afford to, to pay somebody to fly in and train them. If you have a large group that makes a little more sense for your company that has a half dozen designers that want to get up on up to speed on SketchUp now, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. For a lot of our users though, they're not in that position. And that's where something like campus comes along because anybody can hop on and it's self-paced. Yes. And you don't have to dedicate a whole bunch of time it's, it's you can just hop in and learn when you need to yeah and and you can pick and choose a little bit you can the way that we've structured it is rather than just being a whole assortment of various things a lot of the learning is linear so we do build on concepts learned earlier but we also keep in mind that if you want to just look jump in and be like i need to know more about inference locking because that's actually like really useful you can just jump in and focus there that's fine um, we don't restrict how you want to use it, but we do present it in a way that if you're coming in new, we say, hey, start here. We're going to walk you all the way through to be a very, very good uh, SketchUp user. That's cool. Because I remember when, when I learned SketchUp, I think it was, I mean, it was YouTube. It was Go on. I mean, there there may have been the getting started videos. I think they've had a couple ish iterations of the <laughs> the 10-minute videos that are like, here's what SketchUp is kind of thing. It's almost, a, a, I don't know, it's not a sales video, but it's it's not a real training video. It's just kind of a, a primer. Yeah. Um, but when I learned, you were kind of left to your own devices to go find somebody on YouTube showing what you wanted to see, mm -hmm. and it, which was cool. I mean, and I'm not knocking it because there's a lot of users out there that learn that way. But this is nice because this is an official tool because it's from us, and it actually is looking like it's going to end up being fairly comprehensive. Certainly hope so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> little, little, um, how the, how the sausage is made. Aaron and I talk a lot about 
uh, what goes into actually creating learning content online and sort of that balance between you want to get as much out as you can, obviously, which means like, how, how can we get this out faster? Mm -hmm. uh, but you also run into the, uh, th this it gets into sort of the nature between, like you say, YouTube and campus and a little bit what we've steered campus to be, which is let's make this a little more, again, formal is the word I'll use, that says, hey, we're going to provide you example files. Mm -hmm. We're going to provide even some of the lessons have little quizzes to test your knowledge. And we're going to be pretty comprehensive. And um, so... It, it is, I hope, a really good resource. Sometimes I think, like you, some people just want to jump around, and YouTube is, is pretty fun. You can get some good personality there. Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's a great resource, and if, you know, it's just one of many. That's awesome. Well, and I've, I've, I've gone through not all the courses, but I've gone through maybe two of them, and uh, it, it is. I do like that uh, the structuredness of it. I mean, it's, it's not, you're not going to guess what you're going to get out of it or where's this going to go. It's, I mean, it's, you're going to learn this. This is the, this is the class. And I think that's kind of nice. Yeah. So I don't want to call you an old timer, but you've been around for, <laughs> been around SketchUp <laughs> for a little while. Like, you, I mean, you even said you've kind of done it all. You've trained different types. Uh, when did you first start with SketchUp? 2004. So that was at last still? It was still at last, still at last software. I was employee 22 or three, something like that. Wow. One of those type of things. How did, so I always wonder this because I hear people talk about, oh yeah, at last, like, how did that work? Was it just like looked in the want ads and hey, there's a software company making a thing I've never heard of. Let me go see what they're doing. You know, I think early on, I, and this is certainly was true for me, but I think it's pretty true for most people early on. You just, you got lucky because you knew somebody. <laughs> I knew somebody. <laughs> I, was, I was actually in Tucson, and I had come across SketchUp because a friend of a friend had mm -hmm. referenced it, and I started learning it myself. And, and at the time, funny side note, um, we had a professor, AutoCAD 3D, had just become a thing, but you had mm -hmm. to enter a lot of commands to create anything. And the, the version of SketchUp at the time, which was pre-version two, and I was, I was going in and being like, wait, to create a block, you just pull it up and <laughs> copy it. And you know, he was and it took like a full hour's class to do the same thing. And I was like, I, this is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a long time ago. <laughs> but um, but I, I learned about it and through again a friend of a friend, I I, I found out oh they're they're going to be building out some training uh, resources, live training resources. I had family up in Colorado. I was recently married and I was working in an architecture firm, but realizing I could do something different, <laughs> so I just applied, got in, became a a road warrior traveling all over the U.S. and Canada training a, a ton of people at the time every week. It was you never unpacked. Yeah. You were just flying to a different city every week. Uh, but if you really want to learn how to teach people SketchUp, and it was fun. Yeah. It was so fun because SketchUp was still new. The enthusiasm around people who were finding it for the first time, um, it was a lot of fun. And it was exhausting. <laughs> uh, thank goodness I was younger. <laughs> That's man, I, I've done my fair share of of road warrioring, and and yeah, I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't train on on the road like I do now. There's, no. I mean, we we did we did get an opportunity to go back on the road, you and we I did. together. It was fun. And that was uh, we did a little little boot camp session this last summer, and and that was, and that was, I say go on the road. We went one place each month for yeah. three or four days, but. Yeah, that was, even that though, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with once a month. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> so you actually were able to, you were part of the transition into Google. Yeah. So what, so you were traveling trainer at Atlast. Had that changed by the time Google came along? So it had changed a little bit. At the time, um, we had a few people like myself that were training and all of us were fulfilling multiple roles, which we mm -hmm. still do. So um, 
my buddy, uh, you know, Aiden or someone else might be helping with graphic design or UI design. And I was transitioning into, I was still doing a lot of in-person training, but I was transitioning into doing videos. Mm -hmm. And at the time we hosted them ourselves. This was pre YouTube and we hosted it on this platform called Akamai and we had like, and there were all those things around it. So when YouTube came around, and this was early in the days of Google, but yeah, I was transitioning into doing some video work, and that transitioned into doing more marketing type videos as well. Mm. So it was a good opportunity to branch out and transitioning into Google, transitioned into, for a while, I did more marketing focus than training focus, and we made the training sort of be more about, hey, let's broaden the scope, let uh, empower authorized training centers or mm -hmm. individuals, we'll let them do training locally, we'll sort of pull back from trying to do all the training ourselves. And so early on, we did training series, we'd uploaded them to YouTube in 2007, early stuff. And uh, back when you could only upload in 480. Yeah. And <laughs> different stuff format and um, and I and what was fun about that transition is going into Google transitioning into marketing was a transition into doing some more case studies and so going out to actually like really deep dive into like how does somebody use this and how can mm -hmm. we tell that story in a really compelling way and I, I, I didn't have a background in doing that so I had to sort of learn to do that um, but I think it helps in, I, you know, storytelling in whatever you're doing is just a good human endeavor. So right. I think all of that was really useful. That's good. That transition uh, took yeah. a side turn. <laughs> no, that was, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that, that makes sense. It, it, it evolved a little bit because again, at, at the, at last size, it's probably easier to go, Hey, all you customers who wants to get trained when we went to Google, all of a sudden that user base expanded. So that was, was probably less less uh, attainable to, to hit everybody up for training. And then, so then, then the transition into Trimble, what was, what was that like for the training program? So the training program, when it evolved from at last to, to Google, as I said, it, it, it evolved into this program where we said, Hey, let's enable the community to train. Mm -hmm. And like so many things, um, the scale of that just became insanely huge. Mm -hmm. And um, partially it was set up in a way that, that we wanted like, hey, let's just cast a wide net. We're not going to put up a lot of barriers to anybody who wants to do this, which meant that over the years, more and more people said, hey, I want to I want to trade. And, you know, it's, it's fun. And, and for people, it could be a good side business. But all of a sudden, we we actually had several hundred queue of people just waiting to get certified by us Ooh. which meant we were personally spending like half a day to a day with any one person being like are you qualified right. and would you be a good trainer it was completely unmanageable yeah so that was happening and then at around the time we transitioned to trimble that was still in place so we said let's we 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 can't manage the program <laughs> in this way. We, there's no way to do that. So we started to scale back that program. We didn't have a good way to, to manage it or grow it at the time and, and just really mentally transitioned to saying, let's see if we can make more online resources available, fully acknowledging, I realize, you realize, we all understand that the best experience is in-person training. Mm -hmm. It just oh, is. Sure. But if you're going to try to reach a million people, you can't scale that That's right. um, in, a, in a meaningful way. So, so we wanted to try and make really good online resources. And I think that's, um, that's where we've gone towards and that's where the focus went towards. And so in the past seven or so years at Trimble, it just it's, it's evolved and grown more towards that direction over time. Very cool. All right, so, so now i got to ask, like, why do you do the job you do? I mean, and, and getting a paycheck is not a, a valid answer, <laughs> but why, so why do you train? Why do you, why do you build campus? Why do you do this? 
I'll, let me frame it this way. You and I have both been to trade shows where you talk to somebody, they'll come up to you and they'll be like, I've heard of SketchUp, sounds interesting, I want to check it out, right. how do I go do that? And in the past, in the past, the best option we had was to, to say, hey, here's a couple of people that we know do some training or check out our YouTube channel. Right. But that's just sort of like, you know, let's just dump you into the deep end. Right, right. Go figure it out yourself. There are resources, but you got to wade through the resources and figure it out. It's that. That's why. Because I have always wanted to tell that person, and I think a number of people have wanted to tell that person to say, if you want to learn SketchUp really good, the right way, we'll hold your hand. Here's your resource. That's why. That's the purpose. I, I think that right now is a great time to get into SketchUp because I don't think there's ever been the amount of training resources that there are available oh, now. Yeah. I mean, the structured stuff, the campus, uh, we actually have a lot more, like you said, informal training online, uh, the availability, like sort of enterprise training. And th there are still those third-party trainers out there. And mm -hmm. then we have them listed on our website, too. They're not the hundreds that you were talking about. We have a, <laughs> a more concise list than that. But this seems like a great time if you really want to learn SketchUp and get some official. Because I, I have. I mean, when I first started uh, going on five years ago, I remember, you know, how, I want to buy it. How, so do you guys do you guys train me? Do we, well, <laughs> and we're like, well, yeah, you're going to have to do some searching, some digging, and find the style that's right for you. It's nice to be able to go out there and go, we'll get you started. SketchUp's always been interesting in that it's such a diverse tool. People use it for so many different things that uh, w we can kick them off with that intro, how to do it. But mm -hmm. then where it goes gets very, well, it's different for everybody. Everybody's path is right. different. And one of the nice things about campus is you, you guys are actually working to get multiple different workflows in there, landscape, architecture, uh, some different pieces in there so that, so that we can go not just, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you what buttons to hit, but actually we'll help you develop an initial workflow as well. I'm glad you brought that up because that's so true. Like. My, my answer previously was definitely focused on the, the many people who are coming at it new. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There's so many people, too, who are like, I've been using SketchUp for a long time, and it's great, but it doesn't do this. It doesn't right. do this. And sometimes the answer is, wait, it actually does. And that's a great answer where you can be like, hold on, let's reexamine <laughs> Because however you came to SketchUp, learned it, or whatever, let's let's uh, give you a little more, let's empower you with more tools. And, and sometimes it's a combination of tools, techniques, mm -hmm. the whole thing. But that say, yeah, you want to do it for interior design or landscape? We understand that the, it, SketchUp's a generous tool, and you kind of need to customize how it works towards what you're doing mm -hmm. so that's great you brought that up because that is also a focus is to say we know you have a specific workflow we want to try to address that in a way that is good for you mm -hmm. and for whatever you know so for now um, campus has not yet been out for a full year and the content takes a little while to build, but we are trying to build that out as to be this super comprehensive. We've got this really great landscape course. We've got this really great course on just sort of illustrating with Photoshop. We know that interior design is important. That's on our bucket list for this year. We're working on some more stuff just around the essentials and basics intro. Um, so we're trying. It, it, there's lots of stuff to cover. We'll, we, we need time to get there. But, yeah, that's a really great point that we want to be more specific mm -hmm. even if you are an expert in sketchup we want to have something there that says actually there's even more you can learn always good never stop learning so something kind of going away from sketchup you are also a woodworker 
I am. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I am. You seem, seemed reluctant to, to acknowledge or accept that. I know. Woodwork, woodworker. <laughs> I didn't know what else. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah, I have wood built whisperer. furniture. I have a shop. I, that's appropriate. So, so as I, what, the question I really wanted to ask or dive into is, how do you see woodworking changing as technology comes along? Is it... Do you think that traditional woodworking, handworking tools are just gone? Just chuck those and everything's computer controlled? Like, where, where is it? What's what's happening? Because we, I mean, and I ask this because we do have a large number of uh, SketchUp users who use it for designing for woodwork. Mm -hmm. We do interface with certain machines that people use for woodworking. But it's got to be a big transition from... You know, going on your shop by yourself and grabbing some lumber and some chisels and I, I don't know. I'm not a woodworker per se, but <laughs> you know, whatever those tools are. <laughs> I mean, I, I know plywood from a two by four, but <laughs> I'm not going to claim a whole lot more than that. <laughs> you don't sell yourself short, <laughs> but um, that's fun. That's that's a fun topic <laughs> because I have definite opinions on that and. That's fun because everybody has an opinion. Absolutely, and you right. have a microphone, so your your opinion's going to matter. That's right, now. right. I've got. <laughs> I get to uh, be on the soapbox for a moment. That's right. You know, the anybody I I think anybody who would suggest that traditional tools or methods are going away, it's um, that's a ridiculous notion to know of all of the. Let's you know YouTube channels and people out there using a digital distribution method to promote the traditional tools, and they just use traditional tools. There are plenty of them, and that will never I, that can't go away. Despite that, some things could be more efficient. The the uh, whatever the best term is Zen <laughs> of using a hand plane uh, to take shavings is irreplaceable by any machine. And that is just uh, a fantastic experience. And that said, I mostly use power tools, mm -hmm. but when I get to reach up and use a hand plane, it's always a rewarding experience. I, I would imagine that, I mean, just on that point, the idea of, cause there is, I mean, computer designing your parts as opposed to going and hand drafting that's that's a step towards technology using cnc to cut some of your parts versus you know a jigsaw or a handsaw that's that's a step but i'd imagine there's that probably parallels people who would yes use only hand tools and nothing powered versus people who are willing to use you know a table saw and a and a power drill and that, that's got to be is that like the next evolution or there the same curmudgeons who are going, nope, <laughs> I'm not going past my circular saw. You know, the, the thing of it is, um, I think when it comes down to it, and one of the things that uh, I suspect is rewarding across the board, regardless of how you approach it, is ultimately what you're doing, you're, you're problem solving, mm -hmm. right? You're problem solving in a way that is deeply, personally rewarding, which is why you're out and doing it on and you're spending, I'm spending my weekends doing this because I just, it's so rewarding, but you're problem solving. You're constantly problem solving. So when I have a tool or when I see a, you know, Hey, I could create some jigs for my traditional workbench that has T track embedded in it. And I could use SketchUp to design a few knobs that I could use to create stops that I'm then using for my hand plane. Right, it's you're coming back and you're you're figuring out kind of new, innovative, fun ways to solve very old problems. That's fun, and so the the crossover between digital and traditional, or however you want to define it, to me, all just meshes together as to just this rewarding, creative process, and. I'm not going to go so far as to saying it's, you know, this deeply artistic meaning. No, I, I you know, but <laughs> creative, yes. And creative problem solving is rewarding. So it, does, it doesn't cheapen the process in any way or? Not for me, 
but I will admit that we have a good buddy in house who I argue with about that. So, <laughs> so sometimes again, and it, this comes down to, uh, you know, how you want to define it. If you want to define fine work working for yourself as something that you want to obtain, that you want to achieve with traditional hand tools and traditional joinery and askew pocket holes, and that's what's rewarding for you, then that's fantastic. And uh, my definition is a little bit different, but it's still rewarding at the end of the day. And I make some, I think, beautiful furniture and, and pieces. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll back you up on that claim, <laughs> what I've seen. So if you, so obviously you're in the same boat as I am, I think, when I would say, if I wasn't working at SketchUp, I'd still be using SketchUp one way or another. Oh, yeah. I, w I would hope to be in a spot where professionally I could use it, but if I couldn't, I would at least be using it on a personal side. Um, do you think that, that SketchUp is, I guess to use this word, essential to your woodworking workflow? I mean, do you, when you go in to design something, are you, is, Diving in first with SketchUp, like an important part of your design process? It is for me. It is for me. It is a thought exploration tool. Mm -hmm. And to some people, it's a tool that, you know, is a means to an end. I think for some of us, though, I've always said I have a love affair with SketchUp. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have models that have no intention of ever getting built. And I love building them in SketchUp for that process. So yes, it, it, it is essential in my process, not only because I, I do use the models I create a lot mm -hmm. of times to explore ideas, explore design, and then to do some rough sort of measurements that I'll take to the shop. I will say I made the mistake years ago. Um, my woodworking hobby has paralleled somewhat my SketchUp hobby. I started around 15 years ago in earnest. And early on, I would create a SketchUp drawing. I would go out to the shop, and I would cut each piece to what I thought exactly as my SketchUp drawing showed. And then I'd go to put it all together, like it, like you're supposed to do with the CNC. And, the, and of course, none of it fit. <laughs> none of it fits. So one of the things I had to learn is that SketchUp is a great tool to get you here and then in the shop you're still taking pieces and fitting them to each other. You're getting close and then you're doing the final fitting based on the other pieces adjacent to, and you're, you know, just finessing that, that final little piece. And so I had to learn that, but yes, I still use SketchUp for almost every project I ever build, um, at least in a rough stage and usually in a little more because. Do, do you think that you end up, saving yourself some material time energy by doing that initial design as opposed to just going at it or 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 how much how much time or how much savings is there versus you're doing just a hand drawing or something like that if you can quantify that i think i would be i would save more time sometimes if i was better even at sort of well, I am guilty of like creating a project and then once it's created, I'm eager to get out to the shop. Mm -hmm. So I don't take the time to break it out and really sort of dissect it and dissect the approach mm -hmm. even because I'm like, I can figure that out in the shop, which sure. is true. I think I could save a little more time if I spent a little more time up front <laughs> and planned out my project a little better than just jumping out and doing a piece that says, oh, now I've got to wait for this to glue up and stuff, and I'm sort of at a pausing moment where I, I could have planned it better. So it does help me. I know there's some really talented and amazing people out there who don't use a lot of sure. digital plans. They're very good at that. But for me, yeah, it definitely helps, and I probably could even a little <laughs> more so. All right. So now we've come to the portion of the show that we call How Do You SU? <laughs> All right, so the idea here is we're going to kind of dive into that steamy affair you were just referring to, your personal experience, your, your use of SketchUp. So 
this can cross into if there's if there is stuff you've done for work with SketchUp, they can they can answer these questions. But uh, this can also be personal. But this is is your SketchUp work. So what what is as you remember? What is the first thing you did in SketchUp? A spaceship. Oh, woo! I already knew that one. Two huh? spaceships. <laughs> I looked and I can't find them anymore. Oh, that's, well, they're probably what version. Three or four. Their version like two. <laughs> version two. <laughs> and we didn't have tools like Follow Me or some other. Um, it, there was no smoothing, mm. so I had I drew ev like, at the time it was, it wasn't very square, but it was very every you know straight pieces with angles. But the cockpit I had to draw manually each facet of this bubble cockpit. Ooh. Um, and I'd figure that out. That was a good way to learn SketchUp and, as I like to say, beat your head against it. Yeah, talk about native tools. <laughs> that was like, it's like a flint axe and that's right. like as native as it gets. <laughs> you draw it all with a rectangle and line tool if you can do it. <sighs> that sounds like it. You know, that, that would be an interesting challenge at some point. Maybe, maybe we'll have some, some content around this about going back to like, what were the version one tools and <laughs> how far could you get today? <laughs> <laughs> I'll write that one down. Uh -huh. All right, so what, what's the most recent, as of right now, as of this recording, what was the most recent thing you made in SketchUp? Oh, I probably have a model open at, at, at my computer at home. What it, um, I have, I, I, I might even have several. I'm working on a couple things. I'm working on a marker holding case that I'm going to cut out with lasers for my wife, for her collection of, of markers. That's probably just sort of an exploration stage. I was, I've, I've got a, a woodworking tool chest that's just sort of building for fun. Um, and lately I've been playing some Borderlands. I don't know if you've heard of this game. I've, I've, I've touched on it, yeah, once <laughs> or twice. So <laughs> I, I am guilty sometimes of uh, just grabbing some of the Borderlands uh, stuff and Trying to model it. Lots of fun stuff to model there. So your most recent SketchUp file is three SketchUp files. That sounds good. <laughs> Diverse. Keep yourself from being bored. All right. So what is the most impactful SketchUp file you've ever made? So this gets, this is where it gets personal. If you have a tier, it's it's perfectly acceptable. You know, some of the you and I, I'm sure, and a lot of people out there who just like to build stuff, and you build a lot of things, and sometimes they have the intention of being real, and sometimes they don't mm -hmm. ever make it that far. Um, one that was memorable and that I still wish I had the excuse to build, but I don't, is when my kids were younger, I built this playhouse, and I built it, uh, so I had built our house model, and then this was going to go in the downstairs, and it had no 90 degree angles or at mm. least few because I wanted it to be this really whimsical thing. Sure. And I built it out and, and I, you know, built it. And then I got my kids in and I'm like, what do you think should go here? What do you think should go here? It never became a reality. And, and mm. part of that is, um, I didn't build it in time before they grew up too old <laughs> and we moved out of the house. Um, but I, for me, I think there's a few models like that that um, kind of I really wish had been uh, come to life. <laughs> well, that's cool too. Doing a doing a design review with your own kids—that's got to be a a fun experience as well. It is fun in that vein. <laughs> My son loves doing Legos, and mm -hmm. I showed him. I was looking at a different, simpler Lego model, and he was like, "What? Is that SketchUp?" I'm like, "Oh, hold on, <laughs> hold on," and I pulled up. One of your broken apart Millennium Falcon Lego models that's on the warehouse plug for Aaron's uh, Go Look Up Lego Millennium Falcon. That was a big model. It was huge, took months, and it is amazing, and he was blown away. Oh, so good. All right. That okay. was impactful on his little <laughs> mind. Well, good. One of my most impactful models for Tyson. <laughs> because it broke you? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we, we, can't, we can't get into that. <laughs> I will cry. <laughs> All right, so, so of all the, the models of the since version 2, so that's quite a, quite a number of models you've made, what is the standout best model you've created? Oh, goodness. I 
I, I'm guilty <laughs> of taking a model to 80% and never finishing it. And yeah, I'm happens. also guilty that I don't put a lot of textures and finish into some models. That also happens. I Maybe it's just coming from old school, but I just, I'm a sucker for the old school visual. The so, white, the white with shadows. Yeah, that one, yeah. yeah, just, just basic. something very clean and, and aesthetically pleasing really about that. Like That's my excusive way of saying, my goodness, have I ever taken a model to the <laughs> kind of finish that deserves? <laughs> what? Okay, um, okay. So let me, let me. If this helps, we can, we can look through a different lens. What is the one that where you got done and you're like, wow, like that. I modeled that. Even if it wasn't done, then you just step back and go, man, I like, I didn't know how I was going to do that. So it, the best might be most gratifying to your own 3D modeling process. One of those was early on when I modeled a car mm. because organic modeling, it had a lot of stuff. I was, used, it was my, some of my first introduction to doing, um, mm. Oh, help me. What's some of these plugins? The subdivision or artisan. Subdivide. And to using some techniques around creating really organic models in SketchUp. I knew it was possible. I just hadn't put myself through the paces. So building a car in SketchUp, even a basic one, but this one was pretty, pretty okay. And I, and I, I finished it. And that was definitely like, oh, I have never done that before, and I had been using SketchUp for many years. That was that was cool. I would I would think that, that cool. sounds like, yeah, vehicles are are like another level. Like if you're you're willing to go in and do a car, especially if it's there's something for you know whimsical or designed from scratch cars. But if you're going to go and like reproduce a real car, uh -huh. that's that's next level. A big muscle car or streamlined. Um, that's pretty cool. You know, McLaren or something. But, and, and let me let me do it quick because I get the, you get this too. One of the things that I think is funny is I just, I want to tell people, look, if you're new to SketchUp, people are like, I want to make that. Don't, just don't, <laughs> just don't. That one day, there's, right. certain, there's a certain aspiration that you should hold yourself to when you're learning SketchUp and it should not be out of the gate. To, to, to model a, a Lamborghini. It, I just got to throw that in there. Yes. I, <laughs> Excellent advice from our training manager right there. <laughs> All right. So flip side of that coin, you have, to, you have to, it's a safe place to talk about this, but what is the worst thing you've modeled? Please. You can look at that any way you want to. Like it didn't, didn't work or you got done and didn't like it or... Maybe it was just the most painful thing to model. I have that car I, I mentioned has three or four failed versions, completely failed, not even like recoverable. And <laughs> it made it to the end. It, it just failed. Just failed. walk away. Yeah. <laughs> failed. Um, so what is it? I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Cause worst, I, I don't know hey. what's the worst, but there's lots of failure, failed models that 30 minutes, an hour, two hours plus in, like, this is not working. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's good that you have the, the fortitude to step away. <clears throat> and let me also say, because I, anybody who's used SketchUp for a while knows this too. Um, the other failure that happens is you're modeling and you are humming along on one side of your model and you go back and you find some little piece of geometry that you didn't know you selected and you pulled out of whack and it has so minusculely and just infinitesimally changed the nature of your SketchUp plane in a way that nothing is working the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And so you have to go back and sort of reverse engineer your model for 30 minutes to find that tiny little error that sometimes can happen. Um, I, I've never experienced that, but I've heard about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, that's always a, a good time when you're, yeah, you're making changes without noticing it. That's rough. All right. So final question for this. And, and again, you'll have special insight to this. 
but what is the number one thing you see new users do that you wish you could go in and correct them or help them with? I wish, I don't know if you, this is the answer everybody gives. I wish that we could just retrain the, the clicking behavior. <clears throat> um, it's, it's, you're going to hear this from anybody who knows their SketchUp salt, click, release, click. Anybody who's taught SketchUp for any amount of time and um, knows what they're talking about, and, and I'll stand by that, needs to answer. emphasize that you click your mouse, you release, and you click again to finish almost every tool. There's a few exceptions, but they're the exceptions in every case. And the problem is that it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So you can't just teach it to somebody and have them learn it immediately. And usually in the context of learning, you need to get past that quickly to move on. And so people unrealizingly create this little, you know, little bits of line or little bits of geometry or it's not working. And you don't know because you're thinking about the process you're using and you don't know that just muscle memory, your finger's not doing what you think it's right. doing. It's just not. And again, um, you know, subconsciously. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I wish we had a really good way to be like, let's build some muscle memory in here right well, from the start. What if we distributed SketchUp with mice where the left mouse button heated up real quick? So if you did click and drag, <laughs> it burned your fingers. You'd let go real quick. Yeah. A little, Something little, like that? A little electric shock after sort of like a, a 0.7 seconds or something like, well, you got to be quick. It, it is hard because there are drawing programs. I mean, like, I'm saying most of Adobe, most of them. where you click and you want to draw a line from point A to point B, you click on point A, move your mouse point B, and then let go. So click and drag, which is the opposite of click, then release the mouse button, move, and then click again. Mm -hmm. That is that is kind of the standard for a lot of drawing programs. Um, yeah. And the, the part that makes this hard for people is you can get, sketch, most SketchUp commands will work with that. Yeah. But when you want the most uh, uh, precision, and you want the most control over your inputting, that's where you want to click, let go of the mouse button, move your mouse, and then click again. And it's, it, 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 it's true, you're gonna have better precision, you're gonna have a better time, and you're going to be more successful two hours later when you're trying to learn about mm -hmm. something like inference locking or right. something, where the sequence of things that you need to, to do starts getting confusing if you're still struggling with how did you click your mouse? So. It seems like such a benign thing, and it's so crucial. And it's not even a SketchUp tool or something. It's mm -hmm. just, and I wish it was something else because I that one seems like oh yeah, you know, <laughs> why is that such a big deal? It just is, and it's one of these that isn't immediately obvious, but it it is over time. It does make a difference. All right, well that's that's it for us today. So on a Thank you very much, Tyson, for swinging by and hanging out with us on SketchUp Talk. Uh, two places that you mentioned or places people should go, learn.sketchup.com, check out campus. Yes. And if they want to dive deeper and see that beautiful woodwork you've been talking about, where's the best place for them to catch you? I do have a personal channel. It's called Geeks Woodshop. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where you can follow some of my builds, some of its furniture, some of its toys, some of its SketchUp-related and hopefully all of it's fun. All right, so check that out too. And uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Aaron.